Hello and welcome back. I've just been giving this uh, motor bogey here a little bit of an oil that uh, hasn't been used in some time. And it's from the uh, Brush Type 2, the uh, the model that came along in uh, 60, 65 and 66, I think, just for a short period of time. Just have a, a swift look at the box. So uh, it was in the uh, experimental blue livery, so it's blue and white with a with a, a whitish roof, or that roof has sort of yellowed a little bit. We'll have a look at that in a moment. But a nice sort of square section, trying Hornby box, so probably the, the 1966 period. Just have that change from uh, trying railways to uh, trying Hornby. And we've got that lovely paper label on the end of the box there. R357B, A1A, A1A, diesel electric loco with magna adhesion and the, the price written in pencil there on the, on the, the pricing spot. That's quite nice. So we'll just have a, a look down the, the other side of the box. Uh, the labels are a little bit wrinkled, but it's still nice it's present. Let's see where tape has been over the years. So we'll just uh, have a look at the back side of the box there. That lovely striking uh, white and red diagonal across there. And then we've got uh, different languages on here. Made in England, Rovex Scale Models Limited. So we'll just pop that down and have a have a quick look back at the uh, motor bogey. So this one runs particularly particularly smoothly. Again, struggling with the words, and the video's only just started. So it uh, it just needed a light oil. Just sounded a little bit dry when I first ran it out of the box, and um, this had uh, just fallen away in my hand when I picked the motor bogey up after removing it from the body. So I've just freshly resoldered that back back into position. Now we'll just have a look underneath there. So uh, whilst it did come along in 65 from what I read, I don't think it showed up in the catalogue till um, 66. If you have a have a look at the uh, the insert picture there, with this lovely four screws holding this quite fragile um, base plate into position. It's very thin plastic. They're quite susceptible to damage with if you over tighten there. And now I've got white grease there, just on on the uh, on the bearings, just to help things along a little bit as well as the, uh, the the drive gear as well so when metal mixed plastic I think the, the white grease works particularly well somebody did recommend that to me quite some time ago who I but I to sort of forget who that was now she does have the magnet adhesion so this bottom plate does hold the, the magnets in place just behind the drive wheels if you have a look again at the insert the uh, the service sheet there you, you can see where those magnets are positioned and it, it gives it a great deal of pulling power and uh, just this pivot on here just goes through the uh, the hole in, in the underside of the uh, the moulding, the body moulding underneath the roof to hold it all together. Nice triangle D-shaped coupling held into place with a, a flat head screw there. So we'll uh, just pop that down and have a look over the uh, the roof. So I think the roof would have been whiter than this, although in the catalogue, again, have a have a quick glance at the picture there. It does appear to be grey, but uh, I think this must have started out life as white and it, it, it had yellowed a little bit. A little bit like the roofs on, on the, uh, the Pullman coaches, I suppose. It has a sort of slightly matte feel about it. I don't know whether it was shiny at some point and it's been cleaned and, and rubbed away. Let's have a look there. So we've got a head code just stuck onto the, on a sticky paper label there. And look underneath, there's uh, a lot of oil splatter here. You can see where it's... Uh, been well used I think this model I've decided not to sort of clean this one or over clean it and I think I'll make make matters worse by spreading that around I've got these two little clips either end there which, which hold it into the top of the uh, the main part of the body molding but lovely detail across the top of the model very long running model I think um, this uh, brush type 2 or class 31 first showed up in the the uh, trying railways period in 1962 and they ran it right through into the uh, mid 70s 76 I think in the Hornby railways period when the, the body molding was retired so quite a long running model quite a successful thing don't think she ever got a, a, a ring field motor so let's just uh, pick this up I don't know whether you can hear that in the background we seem to have an emergency vehicle passing the house but uh, just excuse that uh, let's have a look at this lovely molding really quite
quite pretty, isn't it? Picked out with those white, white line running down the side, yellow warning panel, red buffer beam. I think we have uh, metal buffers pushed in there. And we've got that lovely uh, paper label there. Let's just have a quick look at that. So it says, do not unscrew. Lift and slide the spring clip to release the power bogey. So uh, if we just pop this down, and I've got a spring clip here somewhere. So or maybe I don't have the spring clip here. I will get a spring clip later and, and, uh, and show you how that goes in. So I must have put that down somewhere before I started filming. So that, that uh, is very important if you undo uh, that sort of nut, I suppose you could call it on, on the top of the assembly there, the whole the whole sort of housing with all these contacts begins to, to uh, disintegrate for want of a better word. So you, it's held in with a clip. And have a look inside the, uh, the model there. We've got these nice glazing strip strips with uh, white lines printed on them. I wonder whether they're sort of handrails or whether they're just a white lining on the glass to uh, to enhance the appearance. So lovely vents all the way down and that decal's really nice, isn't it? Just sitting on the surface of the plastic. I think they're quite susceptible to damage. And then you've got these little apertures here and here where the uh, those little clips we saw on the roof. They're sort of corresponding and hold the whole thing together. I think they're quite fragile. Nice big weight in there. I think it does need a little more weight. I haven't run this model very much, but uh, the others I have added extra weight. And I think the ones in the uh, early mid seventies have had two of these weights in installed. So uh, the securing screw just comes straight through the bottom here. So have a look now, I think we do have that. Uh, Trying R357 and then uh, built in Britain. And I think this, if we can get this in focus, it says br brush traction. And again, I think that's probably England under there, but uh, I can't quite read that at the moment. I have to apologize for that. So, uh, again, struggling with glasses, looking at the phone and trying to focus on the model. It is uh, quite difficult. Yeah, I, I think that says England. And then we've got uh, sleeved wheels on this dummy bogey here, just on, uh, on metal axles, but the axle boxes are closed. So that detailing down the side of the bogey is quite quite pretty. I'm not entirely sure whether it's correct. The ladders under here don't sort of line up with the, with the door. So just uh, trying reusing parts, but uh, quite a lovely thing. So I think, uh, 65 to 66 in this livery. And just a quick update, you saw I'd lost the spring clip which hold the power bogey in, but uh, I'd looked under everything else but the, but the power bogey and the magnet adhesion had nicely picked up the clip for me and I, I had not really worked that out. Still, you live and learn, don't you? So we'll uh, just uh, install the bogey back into the model. Uh, there is, I did mention that there are magnets below that collection plate at either end there. Again, just have a, a quick glance at that service sheet there. So that really gives it that stick to the track and that additional pulling power. So we'll just uh, pop that in. So there's the hole in the, the bottom or the top of the body molding and that little nut, I suppose we, we were gonna call it. I'm sure there's probably a more technical name for that. So we'll pop that in there. Hold the whole thing together and we'll just slide that spring clip in there. And just pop that into place. And there that holds the, the whole thing together. Very, very simple. And it allows for a little bit of roll in the body. Unlike that class 47 where we're looking at, uh, or that older class 47, the green one has no body roll and it, it can cause it to derail in, in certain circumstances. So as we can see with this, uh, older trying model there is a plenty of body roll whether all of it was intended or not is another matter but uh, it can prevent it from derailing so we'll pop the roof back on so the, there is some detail on the roof which needs to line up with these ladders so there's a fill cap on the roof and one rung of the ladder still there that's just to pop that in there there we go i'll get that in place and then we'll snap the other end into place 
There we go, a reassuring click. So that all looks uh, neat and tidy. So she does look uh, quite a fine thing, doesn't she? With uh, with that white roof and the, the stripes along the side, as I say, I think that is just aging, I think, and it's just yellowed over time. So I'll just pop the, the screw back in and uh, we'll have a look at have a look at her on the railway. So I've got her there at the station with a rake of um, blue and grey coaches. I think we've got uh, our 728, the brake, and 727, the composite. We've got a pair of those, um, a pair of each of them, sorry, sitting there at the uh, at the station. Those, those coaches came along at the, the similar time period, available 65, not really showing up in the catalogue from what I can see, till 66, they lasted till about 68 with these grey roofs and in electric blue, I believe in uh, 69, they became rail blue with, with, with the darker grey roof, which we've uh, seen in other videos. But uh, whilst there's still some catenary in there, if you look, if we come a bit wider, we have sort of removed a lot of it. There's just a little bit left in on the sidings. We'll just have a look back down here. So we've still got all those wagons sitting there. Uh, I haven't cleared the layout, I've taken some things away. I put the TC Pacific away and the, those Australian star wagons we saw the other week. I uh, put Davy Crockett away, the Electra and so on. So we've cleared some space, but I'll, I'll get around to taking some more of that uh, catenary out over the next week, I think. So we see we've got it all off the, uh, the side walls here, right the way around. So it does look rather bare. Uh, I think it had to be done, it was time to do it. So I think what we'll do, we'll, we'll go over to the controller and see if we can get that uh, locomotive with the blue and greys out of the siding. So I think it was a train, it was made up in that livery to, to do something that British Rail had done in, in the mid 60s, the uh, XP64 train, and they were experimenting with um, these Mark I coaches just before the, they stopped production of them, I think, and uh, they went over to Mark II. They tried out things, from what I understand, that was carried over to the, the, the later design of the Mark II coaches. So there, uh, doesn't that look bare without that uh, catenary running over all of that point work there? So it really is um, quite a change. But uh, if you have a look at the, uh, the insert pictures there, you can see me uh, pulling some catenary out. I know we've, we've got a bit sitting there waiting to be uh, cleaned. I've been sort of dusting it a little bit because it's uh, it's much much dirtier than it looks. You can see some that's still sitting here. Pull that one out. Wrestle that one off. You see uh, the amount of dust sitting in there. If I just rub my my finger in there, you can see things do get dusty when they, they sit around on on the railway. So we might as well take. A couple more out while we're at it. Whoops. You can hear it making a, a most terrific noise. Let's see if we can, we can separate that here. One handed, it, it's not very practical. So we'll leave that for filing at a later date. You can see in the insert picture the, the box of accumulated parts with um, um, the catenary and the fencing and so on. And uh, I've taken those out as well. Like I say, we'll have a look at some of the catenary parts in more detail in a video soon. So let's, uh, let's grab some controls and uh, see what we can do with this. Sorry about the wobbly camera again. I'm, I'm swapping hands for the controller. So I think we already have the points open for number 11 out onto the uh, inside line. And let's give it a little bit of power. lovely plastic rattle coming from those coaches can excuse the uh, not only the creaky floorboards but the uh, the creaky chair I'm sitting on at the moment so let's switch that point there we have it and let's uh, give it a little power and see if we can follow it around for a bit
quite a smooth runner, this model. I said that before. Nice hum from the motor and a rattle from those coaches. the engine shed there. And then one more time around. And we should probably just catch her from the other side. Let's see if we can have a look at her coming down the side of the station. Off into the distance. And the bright window again. So I think what we'll do, we'll uh, just swap hands on the controller again and see if we can uh, throw some points next time she's around and get her onto the uh, outside line. So after she's passed there, we'll throw number seven. And let's see if we can catch her coming through there. Good. Now I'm just going to bring her to a stop there and uh, we'll just click the points and then we'll have a, a swift look at these uh, blue, blue and grey Mark 1 coaches. We'll just have a, a swift look at the coaches and the locomotive in the uh, 1966 catalogue. Whilst they were available in 65, they didn't make it into the catalogue. So we have the, uh, the coaches here. Here we've got the composite R727. I think this is quite interesting what it says here. Blue composite coach with interior fittings. This coach has been recolored in line with British Rail's new stock for the Houston Crew Manchester Liverpool electrification project. And there's the brake underneath R728. So I think these came along 65. They ran in this livery through till uh, 68 and then 69 to into the early 70s. I can't remember which year now um, with, with the dark grey roofs and in, in rail blue. I think they, they reta retain the, the same uh, product number in the catalogue. So we'll just go back a page here and we'll have a look at the locomotive. There she is, R357B. Looking quite striking there, although it does appear the roof might be light grey the way it's depicted there, doesn't it? And the green variation of the model just sitting to the right of it there. Terrific uh, page of uh, locomotives that, isn't it? And we've got the, the old CKD kits at the bottom there as well. So we'll just pop that to one side, have a swift look over the coaches here. We've got the composite R727. So both of these are unboxed. The, the others on the railway also unboxed one. So some of these do bear scars from playtime. There's a little bit of a crack, cracked piece missing away there, isn't there? But lovely detail on the inside. So that's a handrail printing on the glazing strip. Nice, nicely, yeah. Uh, sharp looking number there on the side of the coach. We've got closed axle boxes and pinpoint axles. We've got the, the plastic wheels. They're, they're quite smooth running. They do have a quite a rattly sound on the rails, these coaches. Some of these coaches have weights and I've noticed some of the later ones that with the dark grey roof seem to have uh, no weights and I don't know whether that was a, an economy measure or not. So uh, fairly decent looking things. But uh, the chassis, I think we've pointed out before, is used on uh, men, many coaches in the range. And I think the, the roof, although possibly in different colours, cropped up a fair amount too. Again, nice scar into the uh, paintwork there. But they are meant for playing with. So we'll just have a swift look over the brake. There she is, different interior detail set in this one. Lovely bars on the window there. I've always thought the, the detailing on the sides of these is, is pretty good. And these are probably sold in the tens of thousands and made many people's railways look the business at the time. So I think they're, they're quite important things. They enable people to have great rakes of coaches at, at a very cost effective price. So I just need to switch point number seven. We should better hear this in the background. I 
and then we'll uh, just follow them around the layout again. Now we're on the outside line, and let's uh, give her a little power. There she goes. You can get quite a slow run out of her, look. Touch more power to negotiate that incline. So the, the motor in this model does really work very well. I know I've said in the past I'm not a fan of this particular designer motor, but I think possibly if they've been looked after from scratch, they're, they're, they're probably quite good. And this one certainly does the, does the business. Let's just bring it to a stop here on the incline. Let's see if she'll back up. A little bit of a hum and off she goes. Relatively smooth. I think we'll bring her back again. And down the, the other side of the layout. Again, a lovely rattle from the, uh, the uh, side walls there. The plastic makes quite a, a rattly sound. Off into the distance there under the window. That old light is very bright coming through the, the blinds there today. Just listen to the clatter now. And then I think it's time for a little bit more power this time. Definitely plenty available. So we'll just uh, see if we can follow her around a little bit more. So I think by the time we have next next week's video, we'll probably have the catenary out of here and some of the track work potentially coming out. A bit clattery there, do you hear that over the, the diamond crossing? Let's see if she'll uh, complete the, the climb up the incline. Not a great choice of words there. She looks pretty good. I should probably tear away across the bridge now. Quite nicely controlled. I say that magnesium does give it quite a bit of cooling power. But I think that's probably it for this week. So if you look back next time, we'll, we'll have a look at some of those catenary items, I think, possibly, that I've got off the layout. We'll have a look how they were depicted in the catalogue. And, uh, and see what else we can have running to have a look at. It's quite striking, isn't it, that livery? But as I say, I think that's about it for this week. Thanks again for watching. It's hugely appreciated. Goodbye now.